I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. But I have lost people, too. You have no idea what loss is. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody fucking except for you! So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is, I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. Now come down. We're going our separate ways. We interrupt this program to bring you... All right, everybody, my name is Kevin. My name is Adam. And I'm Julie. And we are the Real Movie Guys, coming into you live this episode. We're going to be talking about The Last of Us, Episode 6, Kin. All right, Adam, last video we got live together before you leave, unfortunately. That's right. But, uh, it's exciting. You know, yes. We, get to talk about, we talked about uh, um, Ant-Man, which you guys should be seeing that review either before or after this, depending on if you're interested in that. But mm -hmm. got to do at least one of these live. And of course. And we just so happened to sit together. We watched The Last of Us, Episode 6. Yep. Uh, not, not bad. bad. I think it's continuing on the trail here. Yeah. This was a really good episode. It mm -hmm. moves the plot forward in every way I wanted. Um, is it the perfect episode? No, I think I have a few little things here or there. But yeah. overall, really solid episode, though. And I'm glad. I'm glad. Don't, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm right. really glad that we're continuing the trend here. Yes. Talk to me, Adam. Where are we at now with this show? What are you thinking? I, I think this even further separates the game from the show, which mm -hmm. I'm okay with. There's so many differences now that, uh, you know, that I've picked up on where, you know, there's a disassociation. But I, I still like what they're doing. I, I, I don't dislike it at all. I think it's working for the show. I think so, too. I think yeah. so, too. They're making the right changes. Yeah. And they're adding just a little bit more to make it a little more interesting, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Julie? What did you think of this um, one? I enjoyed this episode. I love spending time with Joel and Ellie and seeing their relationship continue to grow. Um, this episode was interesting where it was kind of, a calm down from the high intensity of the last episode. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this one had some more emotional beats, character development along that route, um, and less action, but still an enjoyable episode. Right, and a lot of people I've I've seen, you know, the argument that like the show is not really about Joel and Ellie. And again, this is another episode where it cements that it is. Mm -hmm. This is their story. Right. And by all means, I think they did a really good job, Absolutely. especially with some of those emotional moments, because Joel has to make a choice uh, is ultimately what leads to this episode. And we've kind of been building upon it as we've been going. Uh, we'll start kind of the opening of the episode is uh, we see uh, a family and an older couple living right. in the middle of uh, the woods and Joel and Ellie stumble upon them. And Joel's holding them up when the husband comes in. And it was a fun scene. That wasn't something from the game no. at all. And it kind of just showed not everyone is kind of like in, in savage mode, I guess, you know, living yes. out in the wilderness. Yes. Uh, some people can still be friendly and you right. can kind of judge people. And I think they were able to judge that Joel and Ellie were good people. And I thought that was a fun little interaction. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it hurt anything. Some people might say it's kind of, you know, not unrealistic, unrealistic in this environment. Unrealistic. Yeah. But I thought it was fine. Mm -hmm. I thought it really was a good, a good, it showed a lot for the character, I thought, too. Yeah. I, it, it, I mean, we've said this previously, but this Joel seems even more compassionate than, you know, mm -hmm. game Joel probably wouldn't have Went given, in there and shot him. <laughs> yeah, he probably wouldn't have uh, second-guessed, you know, anything that happened there. So I I don't know. I, I think, it once again, it works for the show. Yeah, and it's tough, I think, especially at Julie. I think you'll agree, too. As someone who, when you play a video game, there's you have to transition from one scene to another. Uh it's easier in a video game, I think, because you have, like, battle set pieces. You have, like, goals, achievements in between. The show has to find some way to do that, and it can't throw you into, like, an action scene every two seconds. That, that wouldn't make any sense or, like, a fetch quest or something like that. They have to transition you naturally. So by putting, like, this little story in there kind of helps transition. It explains, like, oh, where we are. Mm -hmm. where the new setting is because again we're in winter now so this yeah. is completely different this is three months after the events that they're still kind of living through through sam and henry which is nice to see them reflect on that mm -hmm. even 
and again, you have to set up the audience for that time jump. And just with this brief interaction, I think it does. It sets up, you know, the isolation of the wilderness. They're kind of alone, and kind of what they're going to be facing going forward here. Right. Introduces, you know, another potential threat. Um, I really enjoyed this scene. I thought there was a lot of um, great comedic moments. Um, just seeing the banter between Joel, Ellie, and this older couple. Um, it was just really cute, um, but then also kind of ended on a more ominous note with, you know, if your brother's in, you know, because they're looking for Joel's brother, Tommy, um, and if he's in the direction that you think he's in, you know, there's nothing but death beyond that point. Right. Um, and to see Joel kind of grapple with the repercussions that, you know, that's his only remaining family left and that potentially could be gone. And, you know, that's something that's going to continue through the rest of the episode, you know, with Joel dealing with his emotions and his feelings of panic and dread. I think so. And they have a really nice scene after that by the fireplace where they're mm-hmm. kind of just talking about, you know, the whole events of like, what's, what, what are you going to do after all this is over? And you see like, Joel doesn't really give a clear answer. Like it's kind of right. like, it just kind of like shows off the answer and Ellie's kind of wants him to give another answer yeah. where she wants to have this attachment to him, but he's so, against it for whatever his reason whether i think it's more of just a, a personal connection he doesn't want to have because he doesn't want to lose her yeah and we're starting that's what this whole episode's really about uh one of the changes and i'll pick your brain for a second adam go for it uh they they introduced this whole thing where he's having these panic attacks almost throughout the episode right uh a little on the nose what do you say as far as like he's got a lot going, going on yeah yeah i don't what did you think you think it was effective would you have cut it out i don't know how necessary it was because again you can show me you don't have to give me this like right such a blatant display of like i gotta hold my chest because i'm upset about the situation i don't know if yeah. i needed that i think the audience for the most part is smart enough I to pick mean, up what's going on you can see it on his facial expression yeah, Pedro Pascal is a solid actor that yes, can do that I, I don't think, think he, he could needed have, to do that absolutely yeah he could have pulled it off like I, you know, without has. even showing us yeah, yeah of course he has yeah and they do it a, a few times you know right. and it's just like okay like again I get what you're yeah. trying to do because that can be a hard emotion to right. pay off but you have an actor that can do that yeah. right like I don't think you needed that little change because mm-hmm. in some ways I don't know. I don't know how this will come across. I feel like it made Joel a little weaker as a character, as far as comparative to the video game. If we're going to make a comparison, uh, video game Joel always felt very a lot more. He was vulnerable, of course, but he felt more strong and like he knew what he had to do. Like I'm going to do whatever it takes. Kind of like what they talked about earlier in the season uh, when they left uh, Frank's. You know, like you have to do what you have to do to protect somebody, whatever it takes. Right. Uh, this Joel like. He's like, oh, I can't do it, so I can't, you know. I don't know. It felt like it made him weaker in some respect. I mean, I guess. I think it's just showing more, you know, did it have to be as spelled out? Maybe not. But um, it's, you know, they've spent now a significant amount of time together, so their relationship is stronger. And I think he's afraid of how that's affecting him. And he says that later on in the episode is, you know, she had to save me because I didn't right. hear the person coming up or like you know i've been failing lately because you know he blames that on his age he blames it on his other thing but i think there is that nagging fear of losing someone again like he lost sarah right and he falls asleep in the episode again, again. too like yeah. again it's yeah. like another time he's failed her and she's had to protect mm-hmm. him right it shouldn't be that situation right that he's in uh which i think that that, that was a nice touch i'll give him that mm-hmm. at least yeah I, I think that both the show and the game uh, Joel's have both conveyed the emotion of you know potentially losing Ellie, but yeah. in different ways. I, right. That's why I feel like the show is definitely showing a lot more emotion. Yeah, right. Um, Sensitivity. They they both are you know in fear of like failing Ellie or losing Ellie, mm-hmm. so they don't yeah. want to deal with that. It's just yeah. I feel like the show is probably showing. I don't I don't know if it's too much or in comparison it's a weird it spot, might be. I think. Yeah, and again it's not a. A turn off by any means for the show it's just right. one of those things like you could trust your audience a little i always you know i always why wag my finger at people that do that um, i'm like shaman i talked about you recently doing that uh sometimes there's just there's things that you do where i just you don't have to always explain everything right. to us like let mm-hmm. your actor speak let your script speak you don't need yeah. to just show it to me blatantly like okay i got it but not picking on that uh we, we journey now into the town which is a, a big setting for the future if uh-huh. uh, the last of us does continue so uh, very well built up. I, I thought yeah. this was a really nice mm-hmm. introduction. And, you know, again, for the people wanting an explanation, it seemed like they were able to give that with uh, 
the dam providing power. These people mm-hmm. kind of yep. congregating themselves in the middle of nowhere where there's not really any infected. They're able to control the situation. Right. Uh, then we come across the, the reunited uh, want we wanted. Uh, Tommy and Joel met up. Cool. Uh, Julie uh, was like yelling over got, there. She got a little happy. teary-eyed. <laughs> It was nice to see. The embrace, Uh the brotherly embrace. And for a character like Joel, we've seen through the series so far, who's very cold and kind of keeps to himself to see when he sees his brothers alive, like, I didn't mess up, like, he's still here. And to see them embrace, which again ties into the whole Ellie story, that that was really nice. I thought they did a really good job. What did you think of the whole, like, town, Adam? Again, based on the game and what you've seen, like, how did you think they did with everything? I thought the town was pretty pretty spot on. I mean, for any of the fans that have played Part 2, you will see that how accurate the town actually is. Uh, It looks like they just took it right out of the game, honestly. Yeah, I could say it's spot on. And even, like, uh, this is a lot of the time now going forward, I think, where they kind of copied a lot of scenes from the game. Yes. uh, In particular. Yes. Uh, Maybe not so much the Tommy-Joel scene, which is a little bit different we'll talk about. But uh, uh, Tommy, we find out, has gotten married, Mm -hmm. which I think is nice. That was a nice touch. Again, that was in the game as well. Right. Uh, Her and Ellie share a scene, Mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of nice, which, you know, Ellie kind of learns about Sarah, yeah. It hasn't been talked about. And, you know, she finds out, you know, Joel's daughter and, you know, the, the, what's going to happen now. And right. then uh, that's kind of when we get the big scene, which I think is the biggest thing. One of the biggest scenes in the episode is when Tommy and Joel kind of have that heart to heart. Tommy, I guess, is under the impression that he's better than Joel. In some ways, he was kind of like following yeah. Joel's example. And, you know, they have a fight earlier on. Then they come again to have this conversation. And he kind of apologizes and say, you know, I'm not better than you. And then Joel just kind of like lays it all out. Yep. Throws his heart out. Mm -hmm. And good for Pedro Pascal. Did a really good job with that. And he had to sell that really to us, like Mm -hmm. the fear. Like, you know, he's acting like someone who's not afraid and will kill anyone no matter what it takes. And Tommy kind of acts like, like, as much as he kind of criticizes Joel for being this person that can, oh, you kill people and you do bad things. Right. He does what it takes and he's Mm -hmm. not afraid, but he is afraid. And it's it's this deep vulnerability that we haven't seen from a character like like him at all in the series. And it was good. It was really good. It was good. It was really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did you think of that, adding that little extra scene? Because in the game, we get something similar. I don't feel like it wasn't as heartfelt. Because again, like you said, I think there's more emotion here. Yeah, Yeah, there's um, way more emotion. But once again... I think it works for the for this Joel, right. like the the Joel that they're trying to convey here. It works for him, you know, because it shows how vulnerable he is, how much faith he, or lack thereof that he has in himself. I guess. Right, and they're really playing that up. I think. Too. Yeah. You think Julia, like, where Joel's kind of more, he's kind of like beat up, and he's kind of had enough. I feel like they're kind of playing that fact up a little more. Right, you know, his age, Yes. you know, he has the, you know, the hearing deficits, um, you know, these waves of panic, mm-hmm. um, and I think. The weight of not only his relationship with Ellie, but her contribution to their society. You know, if he can't deliver her to the Fireflies, you know, humanity's lost then in his mind. You know, so it's more than, you know, his own personal investment. It's, you know, her potential for the rest of the world. You know, and I think that's why he is, is you know, really turning to Tommy to help complete the mission. All right, and then we get to the big scene, which I think was one of the ones I was personally waiting for, is mm-hmm. when um, they changed a little bit the setup, which I was completely fine with. It kind of made more sense. Yeah. Uh, in the game, Ellie actually runs away, and Joel goes after her and kind of finds her, and they have this conversation. But they kind of made it more stationary, where it just kind of worked for pacing. Like, uh, yeah. we didn't need Ellie yeah. running away. Agreed. Uh, which also, I do want to forward, ju- Ellie's definitely growing on me even more, I, I think, her. in this episode. I uh, think it's at the point where I just don't even... I don't really... Yeah. I don't have to make have that no comparison. doubts anymore, yeah. Anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm seeing her as she's pretty much one for one. And it's interesting because I know they've said multiple times she didn't play the game. They kind of kept her away from right. that. Getting the same performance almost, right. if not yeah. very on par. Yeah. And even yeah. like those additional scenes, like that opening um, where she was just so funny, like where, you know, I guess Joel has her hidden away and she just makes herself appear. And he's like, What are you doing, Ellie? You know, like right. she just really has made it her own, but still has that core Ellie. Yeah, I think she's doing really great with the character. And when she has to deliver the scene like she does here with the, I guess it would be the, the window seat scene, I don't know yep. what to say. Uh, Joel goes into the room and he and he talks with her about telling him what he's going to do. And uh, Adam, go over the scene a little bit. What did you think as far as... I, I love this out. scene. I really do love this scene in both, mm. both the show and the game. I think it's a very, uh, it's a turning point. Right. It, it really kind of solidifies that relationship between Joel and Ellie. It and kind even of, like the importance of things, right? Yeah. I think like how she asked, like, this is all they worried about. 
Like exactly. worried about clothes, yeah. and worried about boys, and all these other things. And, right. You know, there's so much more important things out there, and look where we are now, right? And it's such a weird juxtaposition yeah. of time, where she even the, even when the movie, because there's a scene where they actually have a movie and they're able to watch a movie, Ellie's not really having a great time. No, because she can't relate to that 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 comfort. She right. doesn't have that kind of comfort that these other people have, yeah. or even can. She can't relate to it. There's because so much going they on. They don't know any any better. Really. No, it's ignorance to everything, and exactly. she she can't be ignorant. Or when she yells everything. at the girl who's kind of like peeking at her from behind a thing, you know, like right. what are you looking at? Someone's just looking at, at her. Yeah. yeah, she's different, and it's like oh, well, because you're they not used lived to that. that life. Right. Yeah, she's lived on the lamb, and then again the heartfelt scene between the two of them, and she's just like, "I'm not your daughter," and he's like, "You're not my daughter." Don't say another word. Ooh. It was such right. a powerful scene. Uh, you guys have to watch it. That's all I can really yeah. tell yeah. you. It's it's one of those things. Uh, it is shot for shot for the game. I yep. would ultimately say so. For fans of that, you're going to be very satisfied. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the the afterward where they talked with the producers and everything, he said, "I wouldn't change a thing." Right. It was absolutely mm-hmm. perfect the yeah. way it was. Mm-hmm. Shots, everything about That's it was great. perfect, and it is. And yeah. executes it perfectly. And again, like you said, I think turning point is the right word because after this, you know, uh, they're about to leave. Um, Tommy and Ellie are about to leave together, and then they run across Joel, who's also packing a horse. And you know, he says, you know, oh, I'm packing a horse to leave. You know, oh, but just, just so you know, I guess you should have a choice about right. who you want to take. And she's like, you idiot. And then they yeah. go, and that's the point. That was like what Joel was waiting for, mm-hmm. like a reaffirmation of, from right. someone, and especially from her that she believes in him. Yep. And it's really interesting to see after that, even though it's kind of quick and. Maybe there's an argument there that it is a little bit rushed. Suddenly we have like this big like heart opening. Some pacing issues. Yeah, yeah I think there is a little bit there to be said mm-hmm. for that. Uh, it's like boom, boom, and not boom. even that, like just their relationship is suddenly like boom, talking and joking and having a good time together when it was cold up until that point. Not even five hours ago, probably. No, were they having this argument. Right, and it's just like I think there is definitely an argument there, which yeah. I think for me knocks it just a little bit, just because again yeah. the pacing of it, the right. whole scene. I guess I mean if you think about you know they both laid it out there you know where they each had their own misconceptions about each other i guess where you know he has during that conference you don't know loss and then she well i know everyone i ever loved is gone you know and Mm -hmm. i'm with you um and then even when they're with the horses you know he's like oh yeah i was gonna steal this horse 30 minutes ago but i waited for you and then her quick decision i think that just kind of confirmed for both of them, like we want to complete this journey together. So I think that kind of oh, yeah, helps sure. eliminate some of that you right. know, unease so they are able to be a little more Oh no, totally time. agree. Yeah. I just, again, the, yeah. the pacing no, of the scene yeah. to where we got to there is just like, right. okay, it's a little quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to mention also there was a very corny, like when Joel's like reflecting and he sees like an image of Sarah oh, yeah. like overshadows over his head yeah. while he's staring. <laughs> Guys, come on. You don't need to be that obvious. Again, don't don't handhold us. We we know Joel's thinking about it. You know you don't need to flash yeah. a cheesy yeah. image of her in slow motion, going like, "Oh, Dad." Like, yeah, really I, mean, I know he's I know he's thinking about Sarah. You know that's it's, yeah, it's, it's obviously he's relating that to Ellie the entire time. Which again, time. I even said we were watching Ellie. Good for that actress, man. The girl yeah. played Sarah. She did a yeah. really good. She, mm-hmm. she had to like. It's One a shame. Episode. It's a shame she's so good and she couldn't be in the show anymore. Right. But it's also great she was so good because it was yeah. someone like we kind of understand like why he felt such right. a loss when yeah, she died. Of course. Uh, it's a bloodshed sword. Great actress. I'll hopefully yeah. get some more things out of her. Hopefully she can find success somewhere else too yeah. after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we lead to the end where they, they get their mission to try and find the fireflies mm-hmm. and they're at the university and kind of, again, this is another scene where it's going to be tough. It was going to be always tough to translate because in the game, it's really just them kind of like wandering around and, you know, finding things and finding little clues and stuff like that. Right. And then they're kind of swarmed by these people that kind of mm-hmm. find them and the, the incident happens there. Uh, it does happen relatively quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of it, Adam? Because again, if we take remove the game aspect from it, do you feel the urgency wasn't as much as it should have been to some extent? Or yeah, I I, I guess given how long the episode was, I was I thought that this was going to happen the way that it did. I just right. didn't know that they were just kind of. Yeah. shoehorn it in at the end there like that so quickly i don't know it felt like so much happened within the last what was it 10 15 minutes that's what had. it was it was yeah. very quick and yeah. very brief to the point uh joel's like struggling with these this guy who comes at them with a baseball bat of all things and right. he yeah. gets sta- you know he hits joel and then joel like kills the guy which is a cool scene can we, right. we only get to see joel, joel be very aggressive yeah 
we haven't really, surprisingly, because again, that's the, kind of what we talked about. Right. But he kills this guy, looks down, he got stabbed with a piece of the broken baseball bat that was swung at him, mm-hmm. and then you know, Ellie, they panic and. I don't know what it was. It was just like the, the, the formatting of the scene. Again, it works, and I'm not trying to take anything away mm-hmm. from it. I just felt like there could have been more urgency like to get away. Like Again, I, I hate to do this, but you kind of have to at this point where it's a game comparison where it was such like a, they're shooting at them, and they're trying to run yeah. away, and it's such a sense of urgency. Like, I have to get away, right. but I'm dying. And yeah. Joel's still like killing. Even in the game, he's like still shooting people. As, like, yeah. He's, trying, like, right. he's still right. protecting Ellie. He's yeah. dying, and yes. he's protecting Ellie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is more like, hey, we got we got to lazily run away now. Right. right. Yeah, I I almost wanted there to be more of a firefight where you know they're you know shooting people from you know behind some kind of cover and then they think they're almost out and then that little altercation happens and then like you said continuing to have to fight your way out of that situation while in that you know dire state you know there would have just been more not stakes but like you said that that sense of urgency and- yeah and I know the creator Neil Druckmann has said several times that this this show would have a turned down violence he actually said he did physically want the, the violence turned down he thought it would be it was a different story he was trying to tell from a different angle and it is yeah. more about love and emotion and right. those, okay. it's not so much about the violence but part that is part of the story and I feel like there is something a little bit missing with that just 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 a little bit for in, me in in a world where there's you know Obviously, other people are going to have guns or yeah. infected. I just right. don't know how effective it would have been for you know some raiders or scavengers right. to bring some bats and to wandering go around the city. Yeah. And even yeah. thinking too, where um, the couple in the beginning and Tommy said, "Beyond here, there's nothing good." Right. So right. you know, right. and they even make the joke like they're walking, like, "Oh, this was an easy." Five day journey or whatever, yeah. no de- no big deal. And then they're fighting guys with bats. Um, so, like I said, <laughs> something a little bit more I, I, I think intense, I could have done that one. <laughs> right? And to show, like, at the end of the day, the biggest evil or the biggest challenge is man. You know, right. the infected, of course, right. are a challenge, but you know, fighting the evil of humanity. Um, and I, you know, I anticipate more of that will come. Right. But you know, you no. Know, and then we end with the cliffhanger. Uh, Joel falls off the horse, and mm-hmm. he's not doing so hot. And mm-hmm. Ellie's just crying. And then Begging. Julie even said they remixed the song from the first episode. Mm-hmm. Yes, another cover of that Depeche Mode song, um, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, um, really nice. like that new cover. Yeah, nice bookend because especially if you watch the preview for the next episode, it looks like it will be an Ellie backstory episode, which mm-hmm. we've kind of been waiting for. I've been waiting for them to kind of yeah. flesh out like what's gone yeah. on with her. Uh, is the placement appropriate? I guess we'll judge that probably more next episode when we talk about it, but. Mm-hmm. Again, as of this episode, I thought it was really solid. You yeah, know, again, it's continuing the tradition of a good episode. Uh, just these minor nitpicks, really. I really don't have anything too right. terrible to say about it. Is it perfect cinema? No, it's really good. You know, yeah, I have to say yeah, that. Yeah. It's one of those episodes where I think the emotion really came through. The performances are what started to show through. And uh, I think we're ready to give our final scores. I'm going to give The Last of Us, episode six, Kin, nine out of ten. A deep breath in, slow breath out. You squeeze the trigger like you love it. Mm. Gentle, steady, nice and slow. You gonna shoot this thing or get it pregnant? It isn't gonna work, it doesn't aim right. You dick. This was a great episode, guys. It was a really fantastic one. you know, again, like I said, to some extent, it is uneventful, maybe more on the action set pieces, but uh, the emotion, which is Ellie and Joel, is what I'm looking for. And it's there. It's moving the story right along. You know, it's it's kind of shown a turnover for their characters. There's not much time left, so I'm really curious to see where they go and how they continue this journey, uh, especially with a flashback coming up. You know, it only leaves a little bit of time to kind of resolve some of these issues, so... I can't wait to see what they do, but phenomenal actors. I just ask, you know, turn down some of that corny stuff, just just a little bit. Let the mm-hmm. audience, the audience doesn't need to be explained everything. Right. We, we can figure it out. I think we'll be okay. But Adam, where are you staying with this one? Okay, I'm going to give The Last of Us, Episode 6, Kin, an 8.5 out of 10. Damn. You're no Will Livingston. Yeah, yeah, but who is? So that made electricity? Yeah. Don't ask me, I don't have a clue. You know, you could have just made something up. I would have believed you. 
I think that uh, some of the pacing issues really affected this episode. Okay. Not to say that I, you know, it honestly would probably be like an 8.9 if you really want me to be a stickler about it. But, but like, I don't know. I, I just feel like there were some things that could have been um, a little bit better explained or handled differently. But, I mean, overall, it was another really good episode. Yeah, pacing is a big argument. And I guess, again, once we see the whole show together as one unit, that's when we'll be able to judge if that pacing was worth it or not to get right. where we needed to. Agreed, agreed. Uh, I'm curious if the show will end up being a better binge in some respect. Okay. Like, I, like when you, like, I can see that. Even when you play a video game to some extent, right? You play a game and you sit Absolutely. down and you just have, like, a really long play session. I wonder if maybe this will benefit from that. Because some shows do. And I agree. This might be one of those. In that, in that case, especially with time jumps like that. Yeah. Right. Julie, where you stand with this one? I'm going to give The Last of Us, episode six, Kin, a nine out of ten as well. So I've been thinking. Mm-hmm. I don't want a sheep ranch, actually. I mean, if the deal is I can do anything. That's the deal. Well, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> Shut up. Why is that funny? You've got to sing something now. No. Come on, man, I'm not gonna laugh. You're already laughing. Yeah, okay, true. Well, you're singing for me later. I'm gonna save the fucking world, man. That's the least you can do for me. Fair enough. You know, there was definitely some pacing issues. I would have liked maybe more, um, you know, challenges, whether it be, you know, antagonists with actual you know (laughs) guns or even some infected when they got to that campus area um but the emotional beats were really impactful um you know between joel and ellie and joel and tommy um that i think you know it was a nice kind of breather after you know the intensity of the last episode yeah Yeah, it's kind of like Like a breather yeah then it just kind of jumps right back into it which Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. i I think it's going to be really again i can't just trust you very interesting to see how they go because there isn't much time left no that's something that concerns me though actually going forward i don't yeah but again if if they hit the emotional beats i think they've proven they can do it even with the the amount of time that they've kind of like allotted for each episode they've proven they can hit those moments i think they can do it one more time right see why i'm curious for the i know we were talking about this i think off camera but like the episode lengths yeah i know that i usually find out like the week of but like you know if we have some longer episodes ahead of us, I think we'll be in good shape. I think so too. Agreed. You know, I think so Agreed. too. And again, I can't wait to see just what they do. You know, it's been phenomenal going so far. Actors are proving that they can do their job and no Druckmann's not disappointing. You know, I wasn't yep. too sure, especially when you have someone so attached to the project and involved in the writing process, you can go either way. You know, it's your baby. You don't really right. want to be messed with too much, yep. uh, but it seems like he's allotted for the appropriate changes to happen mm-hmm. to make this piece even more superior in some respects to the video. Game. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, can't wait to see what happens. But uh thank you guys all so much for joining us for this episode of the Real Review. My name's Kevin. That's Ad, and that's Julie. We are the Real Movie Guys. Real guys. Real movies. Real thoughts. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. If you guys like what you've seen here today, consider giving this video a like and leaving your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to stay up to date with everything Real Movie Guys related, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget, all you audio listeners at home, we are available on many podcasting platforms. Just search The Real Movie Guys, we should pop right up. Thank you again all so much for joining us on this episode of The Real Review. We are The Real Movie Guys. Real guys, real movies, real thoughts. Catch you next time.